This is the 4070 Ti. It's big, it's powerful, it's expensive, and it's white. Th those are its four most prominent characteristics. I mean, it also plays games pretty good, so I guess we should talk about that, right? Hi there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. When the 4070 Ti came out like five or six months ago, I think it's fair to say that the reception wasn't great. Most reviews slammed it for being expensive or not delivering enough performance for the price. I think that uh, Nvidia shot itself in the foot when they were uh, generating hype for this GPU and claimed it was three times faster than the 3090 Ti. Uh, because that was a very specific scenario. And it's sneaky marketing stuff like that that really sours reviewers on a product. It, it does more harm than good. The 4070 Ti is my current GPU, which I bought myself from a, a store, and I only had to sell one of my cat's kidneys to be able to afford it. All the tests today will be done at 1440p. This GPU can handle most games at 4K, even at high settings, even with ray tracing. However, you'll need to make liberal use of DLSS. And because we're on a 40 series GPU, we can make use of DLSS 3 frame generation to give us a huge boost, as you'll see. The 4070 Ti is built on the AD104 architecture with 7,680 cores, 60 RT cores, runs at a frequency of 2,310 MHz, 12 gigabytes of GDDDR6X VRAM clocked at 1,313 MHz on a 192-bit memory bus. And can I just say that I really like the look of this specific GPU. This is the Gigglebyte Arrow version. I bought this model because it's white and it matches my white build. Just a, a classy GPU for classy people like me. All right, uh, let's quit talking about it. Uh, we're going to see what sort of high-end gaming experience that we can get on a 4070 Ti with my most demanding games. And maybe this will help you decide if it's right for you or if it's too much for your modest sensibilities or if it's not even enough for your big boy GPU needs. I'm running this 4070 Ti in my main gaming and editing PC with a Ryzen 9 5950X in an Asus ROG X570 motherboard, 64 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 MHz, 2 terabytes of NVMe storage, 16 terabytes of hard disk storage, and a little Wally toy for good luck. Uh, full specs and parts list can be found in the description below. Starting off, as always, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We'll try out some more modern games in a few minutes, but we gotta start with Tomb Raider. It's my go-to benchmark game, and I know what this game requires and how far we can push it. And yeah, we're not gonna have an issue playing Tomb Raider. I'm running at 1440p native, maxed out ultra settings, ray tracing set to ultra, and I'm getting 111 FPS on average with 59 FPS 1% lows. I still love the way this game looks, even after all these years. It's like five years old at this point, and it, it still impresses me. And it's running amazing on the 4070 Ti without any compromises. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm running at 1440p with every setting maxed right out. This is as far as we can push the game without mods. And we got 95 FPS on average. That blows my mind, man. When I first got this game on PC, I was playing it on my 6700 XT and I was constantly tweaking settings to try to squeeze out extra performance. I, I love this game so much and it's such an amazing looking game when you can max it out. And even on my 3080, I couldn't push it this far and get near my 100 FPS target. So I, I'm very happy that I, I could finally run this game in all its glory. I, I might even play around with some visual mods to push it further. It's not the most technically impressive graphical engine out there, but the artistry in this game puts it ahead of so many newer, fancier games. This is a sightseeing game for me. I just love spending a nice, relaxing day riding the countryside without a care in the world. Here in The Last of Us, I'm running with all maxed out ultra settings, 1440p native, no upscaling, and I wasn't able to get up to 100 FPS. I only managed about 82 FPS on average, with 42 FPS 1% lows. I probably should have made use of DLSS to get that frame rate up closer to 100 FPS, now that I think about it. When I'm playing on my native ultra wide resolution of 3440 by 1440, I do need to make a few more sacrifices that you'll see here 
to reach 100 FPS. And I, I don't mind using DLSS at all. I, I think most of the time you can't even tell that it's on. Uh, one thing that's interesting here in The Last of Us is the VRAM allocation. 11 something gigabytes of VRAM. We only have 12 gigabytes of VRAM to work with, so this is getting pretty close to the limit. However, we are running with ultra textures, and at least the VRAM management is better now that the game has had a few patches. There are a few stutters, as you can see, we only got 42 FPS, 1% lows, so it's not the smoothest experience in the world, but again, a DLSS would probably clear that right up, I think. It certainly won't help the fact that I suck at this game, though. And on to The Witcher 3 with the next gen update. One of my favorite games of all time. Now, this is interesting. I'm, I'm running with all the settings maxed out, including ray tracing with balanced DLSS. And on this little walk through the village, I'm only averaging 64 FPS. But when we go and enable frame generation, I'm now getting 100 FPS. Yeah, it's that much of a difference. It, it turns a game from a 60-ish FPS to a 100-ish FPS game. And I I've heard some people say that it looks like crap. But I don't know, man. Check out the video where I look closely at this because I can barely even tell that it's on. It's kind of magical, actually. DLSS 3 frame generation. It's not talked about much, but it's a huge selling feature of 40 series GPUs, in my opinion, because it lets us run at higher settings and resolutions, including extra effects like ray tracing. And we can mitigate the performance hit with some frame generation for basically no visual downgrade. Until AMD comes out with FSR 3 frame generation or whatever, whatever it is that they're going to call it. Um, I, I'm inclined to say that the NVIDIA premium is finally worth paying until we get an alternative. Uh, we got uh, 86 FPS on average during gameplay, by the way. Moving on to Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, again, here we're going to make use of frame generation. Uh, for comparison, in this scene here, I'm getting around 83 FPS, but with frame generation, we go all the way up to 125 FPS. So like, why wouldn't you use frame generation? This is running at 1440p with quality DLSS, ultra maxed out settings, and with frame generation I got 134 FPS on average with 53 FPS 1% lows by the end of this little segment. Now, the elephant in the room is that if I lowered the settings, I could run without frame gen, and maybe without DLSS. And that's true, and the game still looks great at high or even medium settings. But this is why PC gaming is great. We can all choose the options that work best for us. I don't mind playing at medium settings when I'm sitting back on my couch on my TV, for instance, but on my monitor, when I'm up close like four inches from the screen, I love getting really high fidelity. The trade-off isn't worth hundreds of dollars. I wouldn't play on ultra settings if I couldn't reach 100 FPS. I'd happily play on high settings instead, but the trade-off to use frame generation is less than the trade-off to lower the settings, if that makes sense. And the 4070 Ti is enough to max out these games if you're into really nice looking graphics, which you obviously are if you're spending $800 on a GPU. And now, uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum. Okay, uh, here's the thing. I love Lord of the Rings. I, I love it. I've read the books probably 10 times in my life. I've seen the movies so many times that I could quote them word for word. And I've loved many Lord of the Rings video games over the years, including, obviously, the latest Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. I'm a fanboy, I admit it. I will buy any Lord of the Rings game that comes along, and I will be very forgiving if it's not a great game. But Gollum, uh, man, <laughs> they really pooped the bed on this one. It's quite possibly the most blatantly broken game that I've ever seen in my life. Like, look at the way the camera j whips around during all the stutters. It's actually unplayable. I, I can't believe that the game was released like this. I really hope they fix it enough to at the very least be playable because I love Gollum as a character. I want to play the game and see what they did with the story, even though I can tell it's not going to be good. I, I still want to experience it, but for now, it's, it's just a benchmark game. A testament to terrible game optimization. Uh, I'm running at max settings, by the way. Ray tracing on 1440p with quality DLSS, and I got 106 FPS on average with a laughably bad 8 FPS 1% yeah. lows. Oh, what a freaking joke. And last, but certainly not least, here's some Cyberjunk 207077. This game got a big new feature recently. They call it RT Overdrive, but really it's just path tracing. I talked about this a lot in my DLSS 3 video. Go watch that after this video if you want to know more about this tech and how the 40 series features can make it actually viable. 
The short version is that path tracing is insanely demanding. So demanding that you more or less need frame generation to even use it, even on a 49. Here we're running with all the settings maxed out, maxed out psycho ray tracing, 1440p with quality DLSS, RT overdrive enabled, and frame generation of course, and amazingly, we're getting 90 FPS on average with 62 FPS 1% loads. It might be hard to see the, the ray tracing and what a difference it makes when you're just watching one piece of gameplay without something to compare it to. If you uh, check out my other video, you'll, you'll see what a difference it makes. I'm not going to go into depth here, but the game world, each of the each of the objects, including the tidy stuff like the trash on the ground or whatever, it, it, it all casts much more realistic shadows and reflections without any cheats that we have to rely on with raster shadow effects. The lighting especially just feels way more realistic. It's, it's an intangible thing that, for me, makes a pretty big difference to how much I enjoy the game. It makes my psychotic rampages that much the sweeter. So, uh, there you go. That's how I use my 4070 Ti in the most demanding games that I play. If you want to know what I think, and why wouldn't you, well, I think it's expensive. It's okay for the price considering the other options though. Uh, you can check the relative performance of this GPU and it fits right in line with what you'd expect to pay for what you get here, cons considering GPU pricing in 2023. So should you buy it? Well, that depends. Are you a millionaire? Are you looking to spend $800 on a GPU? Uh, seriously though, if you want to play at ultra settings at 1440p and you want to use the latest RTX 40 series features like a frame generation and path tracing, it's a, it's a good choice for that. But if you're playing at 1080p or you don't mind going with high or medium settings, and I've said many times that modern games still look amazing even when not at ultra settings, then I'd personally recommend a cheaper card. <laughs> I, I don't want to tell you how to spend your money, and I don't have all these GPUs on hand to test myself. I'm just sharing my experience with the 4070 Ti, and I'll leave it up to you to decide for yourself if it's right for you. I'll include a link below to this model of the 4070 Ti that I have here, along with a few other models that I like uh, in the description below. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, leave your comments below. I love to hear your thoughts on the stuff that I show in my videos. Uh, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. Uh, check out my Discord server if you do that sort of thing. There's a fun bunch of dweebs over there to hang out with and chat with, including yours truly. And that's it for me. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye